G'day and welcome to Crystal Clear Mathematics where it is easier than you think and we're currently celebrating Subtraction Fest, a series of short videos in which I'm demonstrating a variety of methods for solving and checking subtractions in arithmetic. No, no great explanation given, these are simply demonstrations which is why they can be short. First of all I'm going to perform the two subtractions quickly this one I'll perform using the borrowing method and this one I'll use the carry method that I described in earlier videos. Uh, these numbers are random by the way. I can assure you I just made them up on the spot. The only thing I really concentrated on was making sure that this, <laughs> this number was less than the one above. Well, I suppose that shows you just how random it was. Actually, I don't know why I ru ruined that on both occasions. There. I don't know what I was thinking of. I assure you they're random. So let's check this out. 5 from 9, 4. 1 from 6, 5. 4 from 4, 0. 8 from 1 can't do, so we borrow. 11 minus 8 is 3, and 1 from 1 is 0. So there it is. This one we'll use borrowing. 6 from 7 is 1, 1 from 8 is 7, 2 from 0 we can't do, so we, did I say borrow? This is, this is carrying this method, uh, 1 up and 1 down. 10 minus 2 is 8, we now have 4 from 2, so we, 4 from 12 is 8, and 3 from 4 is 1. Quite different methods. How do we know these answers are right or wrong? I'm going to demonstrate a method called casting out of nines. Again, the explanation I won't give, it comes from number theory, but basically we reduce each of these three numbers to a remainder base nine. That is a remainder if we divide by nine. And it's simple, we just cast out nine. So this is worth nine, out it goes. Uh, two plus one plus six makes nine, out they go, so that leaves a four. This number, if you divide it by 9, has a remainder of 4. Here, 8 and 1 make 9. 4 and 5 make 9, has a remainder of 1. So I would, subtract, I would expect, if I subtracted a remainder of 1 from a remainder of 4, that I would get a 3. Let's see, oh, look at this. 5 and 4 is 9, out it goes 3. So I'm now confident that this number is the correct answer. It's a very quick little method, isn't it? I'll just erase that because it just clutters up the side a bit. You can do this in your head if you wish, but there we go. Now here, seven and two are nine, out they go. Four and eight is 12. And we can perform the same operation again and add the one and the two and the 12 and get three. What have I got here? Six and three is nine. So they go out, and I'm left with 2 plus 2 plus 1 is 5. Now, in some ways I should have left that as a 12, because 3 minus 5 is negative 2, and negative 2 base 9, that is if we're working in bunches of 9, is equal to a 7, 9 minus 2. But if I left that as a 12, 12 minus 5 is 7. So either way it works. This should be a 7. Look at this. 8 and 1 is 9. Out they go. 8 and 1 is 9. Leaves a 7. I'm confident that's right. Uh, I encourage you to practice this. It's actually a lovely little tool if you're having to do mental or manual subtractions as opposed to work on a calculator. This is a great method. And even when you do work on a calculator, sometimes just if you wish to check uh, I've performed the reverse addition, which is the method from the last video, using your calculator. Well, you can just do a quick check like that to be sure if, you, if it's something that is very, very important to you that you are absolutely certain you get it right. Very nice little method. Um, believe it or not, there's another method dealing with 11s, rather than casting out 9s, and that way you can be very, very confident you've got the right answer. But I'll leave it at that. I hope you've enjoyed the demonstration and I thank you for watching.